Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Today we're going to be talking about Arduino. Arduino, which I think I've introduced before, is a physical computing device, or basically it's this uh, circuit board here which has a chip on it and input and output pins. Uh, this is something I'm going to use in a lot of projects to add sensory and motor control, which I'll talk about here in a minute. But one of the things I wanted to do was sort of hopefully give what will be a very layman's introduction to what exactly the Arduino is and isn't and how to get started with it. This what I'm holding here is the sort of quote unquote Arduino. Arduino is also a company based in Italy and Arduino is also the open source intellectual property of the chip I'm holding which includes the circuitry and the code on this uh, chip right here. But basically this is your typical Arduino. This comes assembled, it costs about $30, and when you receive it, you are ready to go versus some of the other options I'll show here in a minute. Uh, what Arduino does is, let me show you, or rather I shouldn't say what Arduino does as a whole, but what I'm going to be using it for, at least to start, is to take input from sensors and output data to motors or other physical um, electromechanical devices. So here are just two uh, examples or three examples of uh, sensors. This one right here is a photo optic sensor or a light sensor. Basically, um, it can detect various degrees of light or if light is on or off. And this little guy here is what's called a flex sensor. As you bend it, it changes the value. So for instance, you can have it controlled so that the further you bend this, the further a motor turns. The other type of sensor is probably the most simple, which is uh, this little guy right here, which is a button. When you push a button, something happens. So um, the way an Arduino works is you plug in the sensor to one of the input pins, and then you plug in something like a motor. I've got a couple examples here. This is a hobby 5-volt servo motor, which you can pro power completely off of the Arduino. You don't need anything else, just this little guy. It costs about $10. And this is an example of a surplus gear motor, which I picked up that runs off of a little higher voltage, 12 volts, but um, same thing where you can control this from the Arduino. So, so you plug in a sensor of some kind into an input pin, and you plug a motor into an output pin, and then you use the IDE, which I believe stands for Integrated Development Environment, to program the Arduino. It is not intimidating. It's very simple programming, and there are literally thousands of examples out there. Uh, I definitely encourage anyone interested to check out my blog and the post on this, which is at nyccnc.com, and there'll be links uh, to plenty of different Arduinos. So like I said, the point of this video is an introduction to Arduino, and one of the things that was confusing to me is what is an Arduino. This is the first one I bought. Like I said, it came fully assembled, cost about $30. But what I wanted to do today here is introduce you to some of the different types of Arduinos that you can buy. All of these do the same thing with um, some key differences, and those key differences are really um, how do you want to connect to the computer? This has a USB part, and it's the big or the normal sized USB. Um, how do you want the size to be? Do you want this sort of, the, this is the normal size of the board, or do you need something much smaller or much flatter? Um, how much processing power do you need? Sometimes you might need a bigger chip, that's some of the options. Um, do you want to purchase it assembled, or do you want to solder it yourself? That would be a cost decision. You can purchase them cheaper if you assemble them yourself. Um, and then there's sort of quirkier ones, which I'll show you here in a second about integrating with Clo. So since I don't own all of these, I, w I just printed out some pictures to show you. This is the cheapest Arduino I believe you can purchase. Um, once again, check out my blog for all the links and the details. This one of these is $15, or I believe you can purchase four for $48, which is $12 a piece. It does require you to assemble it and to solder it, but um, still a, a really good deal. This one's called the Lily Pad which is able to be sewed into clothing. The pads are all, all around the edges here and you use conductive thread to literally to put it in a sweatshirt or a pair of pants or something. This is called the Sanguino, which is a much bigger uh, processor chip, more input and output pins. Uh, but once again, all of these are quote unquote Arduinos in the sense that they use the same programming language and can more or less do the same types of things. This is called the I don't remember what this is called. I think it's the breadboard type Arduino. Basically, it has pins that line up to a breadboard, um, and it has no USB, so you've got to use a special type cable called an, I think it's called an FTDI. 
serial to USB cable to connect it to your computer. Um, that sounds like a chore and it's about a $20 cable, but it takes a lot of the hardware off of here because you don't have to have the USB conversion. Um, this is a really cool board called the Illuminato, which is made by the folks at Liquidware. Um, similar to one you'll see here in a second, it just has a lot more input-output pins, full-size USB, very flat surface mount, and a very cool aesthetic look to it. This is called the Seedwino. It's very similar to the standard Arduino, except all the parts are um, surface mounted and it has the small USB or the mini USB port like you see on cell phones. Here's the Arduino Nano, which is a very, very small uh, Arduino, which I believe is made by the folks in Italy. Still has the USB on it though. And then here's a Arduino Mini, which is like that one, except it does not have the USB on it, so you've got to use a one of those cables again. And lastly, this is, I don't know if this has formally been released yet, but um, it's called the Arduino Mega, and it's a new product which um, is just simply going to have more input and output pins. So stay tuned to the Arduino website. To see. Okay, quickly, um, just to show you, this is actually a free Duino which I assembled and soldered myself. Not hard, but you do need to know how to solder. Um, it's hooked up to a breadboard, which is why I didn't want to disconnect it, but that's a free Duino. And then the next concept here is our shields. Shields are really cool. All, most of the Arduinos that are this size or this form factor PCB allow you to put shields on top. Basically, they are devices which stack and have the same pin header alignment. So you literally just squeeze it down, and they do different things. Um, but one of the points of this video is I wanted to help you understand what's an Arduino, and then what's a shield, and what do shields do. The simplest shield is something like this. It's called a proto shield, and it doesn't actually do anything except helps it make it easier to prototype little projects on an Arduino. So as you can see, when you connect this, you get the same pins on top. Um, you have some extra 5-volt and ground rails, the LEDs, and a little breadboard. But in and of itself, there's nothing on this chip that makes the Arduino more advanced. Unlike, say, this, which is the maker, I think it's the maker store motor control. And this can control steppers, servos, and DC motors with external power. So when you put this in our, on an Arduino, you actually are changing the capabilities of the device. And the, um, you know, when you purchase something like this, they include the software library so that you can use it. It's not difficult. Um, this is another product made by the folks at uh, Liquidware. It's really cool. It's a joystick. You should definitely check out their website. Um, they've made some really cool things with this and with their uh, touch screens to make sort of Game Boy or Blackberry-like devices. But once again, this would just plug on, uh, excuse me, right on top like as a shield. And then uh, lastly for shield is an Ethernet shield. So it has an RJ45 jack and a chip called the WizNet chip, and when you plug this into your Arduino, it allows you to hook your Arduino up to either you know, a local area network or even the Internet. And the last product I wanted to show you today is a really cool product, also made by the folks at Liquidware, called an extender shield. So let's say you want to attach two different shields to your Arduino. Now, obviously, the pins need to allow you to do it such that the shields can't be using the same pins simultaneously, but let's say you wanted an Arduino and an Ethernet shield. What you could do is put this shield on the Arduino, and then now you've got room for two shields on top. So you could put an input shield here. I'm not actually going to plug it in. And you know, an, an Ethernet shield this way. And that's kind of how you can sandwich them together. That's it, folks. Ooh, and last but not least, certainly is a, another shield which I've ordered but hasn't yet come yet. Uh, called the Danger Shield. Um, this is really cool. It's basically a, a great way to learn the Arduino. It has three different sliding scales. It has a, a piezo buzzer, an LED display, uh, switches, inputs, a knock sensor, um, and I can't remember what else off the top of my head, but I'm really looking forward to, to purchasing this or this arriving so that you can, you can learn a lot um, on sort of one board. Just another example of a shield. Uh, anyways, check out the blog, folks, NYCCNC, and let me know if you have questions. Thanks.